It was Roddy on the verse. Oh, so he was doing, he did yeah. the whole song. The whole song, yeah. Damn. Mm, yeah. Was it called Racks in the Middle then? It was called Racks in the Middle, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So then you, so you had the verses. Roddy, of course, is on the hook. Mm -hmm. Nip come and hear it as opposed to saying, let me jump on this or let yeah, me get said, a verse. Let me have it. Let me have it. Yeah, bro, it was like a real like movie if I think about it back. like It was like when he was doing the verse talking about his homie Fats, yeah. you know, rest in peace. He had his hoodie wrapped up and it's like he was crying tears, you know what I mean? Literally like crying tears in my studio, like doing the record, letting his emotions out and just really being a man about the situation, like just leaving it all in the stew. Big Boy's Big Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. We had to do this one. Mm -hmm. Hit Boy, welcome Hit to me. the neighborhood, bro. Hey, it's a real pleasure and an honor, man. Hey, For man, West pleasure. Coast, West Coast legend, man. Just you a legend, period. So I'm man. just like grateful. That's all true. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this is, I mean, how long you want to talk about me? <laughs> 40, 45 minutes? No, I'm just waiting. No, man, you stopped it. No, I can smell them, bro. But no, let me tell you, man, as long as I've been in this so-called game, I'm still so interested in what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Because I lived this before I got into radio, bro. Right, yeah. And and I come from a point, man, where I always read credits. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, even with vinyl, man, I used to study vinyl and look at the grooves yep, and yep. see the little messages they used to put in the acetate and the plates and things of that nature. So I right. grew up loving music. And so now when you start to see, you know, people that come into the game and, and with you as well, Hit Boy, it's been a journey yeah, watching sure. you. And it's been a lot of tuition into the school of experience that you pay and you continue uh, to pay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? First off, how did you and, and, and I want to go go with you all the way through, man. How did you get into music? Was music in your household? I know it's in yeah. the bloodline. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, <clears throat> when I was uh, a kid, I lived with my uncle and he was in Troop. Yeah, we man. Troop. My grandma, yeah, him I, and my I know grandma it well, bro. To, I used yeah. to pay to go see them. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Straight out of Pasadena. So. Um, you know what I'm saying? Watching him, going to video shoots, going to studio sessions, seeing how fresh they was, the dance yeah, moves. Man. I was just like, And they work hard. You no, know, for sure. I was like, I got to be a part of this. And I just, you know, kept going until I found my niche. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what was the niche at first? Um, I mean, the niche at first, like, I started rapping. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. I started rapping and met other people around my age group who was, like, recording their own music. And then I just, just kind of ran with it, just, like, start making beats. And how old are you when you start rapping, though? I was like 13. Okay, 13. Yeah. And, and yeah. everybody that, that's into music at some point, DJ, whatever, every, Jesus Christ, who the fuck is this? What is it? Wait, oh, is oh. that Walker? Oh, yeah, Whoa. that's the homie. He <laughs> can't come in here. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be we, too much space taken We don't up. have no room for this motherfucker. <laughs> Why show up Jesus though? Christ. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, my gosh. Can you put the camera? Just said, walk over here to his boys. Walk over here behind. Watch your head, bro. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Big Walker. What's his name? Walker. Walker? Yeah. Walker. What up with you, big homie? Well, how tall are you, Walker? I'm about 6'8. Motherfucker, Walker. <laughs> Shit. Walker, we gonna have to we gonna have to rotate y'all big motherfucker. Double motherfucking. on Walker, yeah. Double on Walker. <laughs> double, you gonna have to step out. Walker, you step on, cause I don't uh, dude, the building is getting off balance. Nah, I know, I know. <laughs> We way high up too. <laughs> man, this dude. Hey, walk if I can get you over here, man, because oh, it's man. obvious we can't get you in the frame. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Talk about uh, protection, bro. Uh, uh, I, I didn't even know neither one of the homies was coming. You know man, what I mean? good Lord have mercy, bro. Whoa. People better not look at you wrong. One Yo, of the homies funny. disappeared. Say what now? He disappeared as soon as he went over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, this oh, dude, gosh. man, he can scratch Jesus Christ's feet. <laughs> 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 He can tickle the Lord's feet right now, bro. That's hilarious. <laughs> man. My man, can you look up and see if you see my mama in heaven? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Man, it's too far. All right. Uh, yeah, too all right. Far. Let's get back to it, man. All righty. So, so at 13, like I was going to say, man, a lot of people that's in music, at yeah. some point, they either DJ, they rap, they mm -hmm. did, and then they find, you know, we kind of throw everything up against the wall. Yeah. And what stick, we be, we kind of become more of that. Exactly. Now, when, you, when you're when you 13 and, and, and you're doing, you you writing and you're a rapper at that time. Right. 
What was the name before Hit Boy? Because I know I used, at 13 I, you weren't Hit Boy. I used to go by Focus. Focus. Yeah, Focus. Yeah, I just like, shit was on my, I need to focus. Shit. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at, mm-hmm. at 13, 14, 15, you knew you need to focus on life and music? Nah, for sure, because I got game from my uncle. You know what yeah, I mean? Okay. It, was a point, it was a point where like I, I played basketball and, uh, you know, all through middle school, through my first a year of high school and by 10th grade that's when I was just like I told my coaches like I'm not coming back to play I'm about to just straight just make music and that was just because talking to my uncle he like bro you can look at you know life it's people who graduated from college who still don't even make that much money or can't find the right job so you can either take that path or you could go full fledged with what you really really want to do and when you get there you're going to be living exactly how you want to and it panned out just like that it it, it panned out but hit man the music business and even being in it now, yeah. it's a scary business, oh, nah, it's bro. Scary, bro. I've been up, down. I've been, yeah. bro. I feel like I've been to the mountaintop of, you know, working with the Jay Z's and Kanye's, like making a one of their biggest records, then linking with people like Jimmy Iovine, and then I've been at the the, the absolute right. bottom of it too. So you seen the peaks and the valleys, and mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. And, and you know what's crazy about that, man? Even with Troop. You know, Troop paid oh, yeah, a yeah. lot of, you know, that they had a lot of tuition into the school of experience, too. Not for so sure. even with Uncle Rodney telling you to see it through, yeah. sometimes the, even the ones that we love, we also tell them, like, man, I don't know if you want this. Oh, you're yeah, not nah, for sure. I yeah. mean, you know, he gave me the real about it, bro. Yeah. But, and I also got to see from how, you know, I, I saw them. I lived with, them, with my uncle at Troop's height. You know what I mean? Right. And I watched the game flip, new styles of R&B groups come in, new sounds come in, and the game flip. So it's just like I, I just watched it, bro. I watched him go from the very top to like trying to figure it out again. Right. So it's like I just put – I keep that in perspective. And you had a chance to, to see day, that, yeah. I just keep it in perspective like, bro, this shit could be gone at any minute. Does that make you work different? Man, I, bro, pe- <laughs> people always be like, why you like, – bro, you live in the studio. Why are you always in the studio? I just know that if I'm not in there – I'm going to be wasting some kind right. of time. So I'm just trying to spend as much Amen. time getting better as I can. And they always mm-hmm. say you one hit away. And that means both sides. Mm-hmm. Like you one hit away from boom, yeah. making it. And yep. you could be one so-called hit away from things falling apart as well. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, I had to find like I had to refine just like my space in this thing. You know what I mean? Because I feel like I came in, I was doing like the niggas in Paris records, yeah. click, all that, which was heavy on radio. Then it went to like, you know me trying to figure it out because if you chasing that that's a scary game you right. know what I mean if you chasing them hits and you chasing trying to be number one every time like you might end up disappointed so which yeah. I did I had to refine it which you know linking with people like Nas I'm four albums deep with Nas right. and I just have my congratulations own congratulations to y'all thing, too bro I just have my own thing with that now versus like I'm not chasing nothing I'm just making music and it's being appreciated by music hey, man, isn't and now that you look back at it too here boy is the hit records, are they scary too? You know how we party to them and you want them? Oh, yeah. But then now you become competition with yourself and you know, yeah. yeah. for sure. It's like, oh, man, he ain't made another whoop de whoop He ain't made another one of them. So it's like they might judge you. Now it's just like, nah, bro, I'm just making the illest music I can make. And it's like right. just standing the test of time. But I think you solidify too because I think now when it comes to hit boy, we just know it. You know what I'm saying? And and not that that makes you comfortable because it's obvious you're not going to get comfortable. But that's just one of them things where it's like, nah, dude is like, dude is solidified. So when you go from rapping and being focused, what gets you into production? Um, just <clears throat> I started a group with this other kid from because I I grew up in Pasadena and then at thirteen I moved to the IE in okay. the Empire I moved out, I lived there for six years then I moved out and that sometimes so can look, feel like a journey nah, away that was a this that was I was like <laughs> I I used to be crying walking to school in the IE because all my Aww. homies from you know from being born till thirteen was all in Pasadena yeah and so but it worked out like I ended up meeting kids that did music and this dude had a whole setup to just like record in his room that was unheard of in two thousand. Two two thousand three, like maybe even two thousand one, whatever. He just like had the FL, he had the everything to just make music out of his mom's crib. You know what I mean? And, and I how just, old were you that time? I was like fourteen, fifteen. Damn. I adapted that and just ran with it. And really, he, it's crazy because this dude, I don't know where he at right now, but he told me like, bro, the only way we not gonna make it is if we stop. And it's like he must have stopped because I mean, you know how he I mean? gave it's you a just, bar though. Gave me a bar. I'm like, it's crazy. So many people I thought was light years ahead of me way more talented than me like they just kind of got maybe they didn't have they didn't have a mindset they didn't feel like they they had to work you know and then sometimes too man life gets in the way 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So like like we were just talking off yeah. air, man, how, how you have your son, right? Right, right. And your son, you was like, man, I was even kind of thinking like, is that going to pull me away from mm-hmm. the studio? But right. you were saying that you bring him with you. Man, look, he right here right yeah. now. You know yeah. what I mean? Whether it's an interview, whether it's a studio session, he be at vid- he's been in videos with Nas and, you know, people like been around like Big Sean and just like so many great people. Like, I'm like, he has no choice but to be yeah. destined for greatness. And the reason why I did say that as well is because timing and the way that things pan out when you were at your at a different grind yeah it would have been different possibly at that time when you're like oh man i got my little man at the house or i gotta Mm -hmm. do this and real Mm -hmm. bills are coming in and that could be also what happened to your partner that you started with sometimes life can knock us off our square you know what i'm saying i just kind of had like a sometimes i'll be like damn i had like a tough journey but then days i wake up and be like bro i'm right where i'm supposed to be i put the amount of work in to get me to the point where i can work every day i don't have to go get a regular job like this is a real blessing to be able to make music every day and make a living off of it hey man with the business being so like because right now and as far as you've been in, too, everybody wants to be in the business. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Nah, yeah, for sure. No one yeah. wants to be in the audience. Everybody wants to be on the stage mm-hmm. or do something. Content creators, oh, whatever. Yeah, Even just, more so, uh, because now you can wake up with your device and you're mm-hmm. instantly yeah, in the you're game. You're a comedian. You <laughs> yeah. Know I mean? You whatever. know? Yeah. And so I'm asking you, man, with, with, the, with the fields being so cluttered, how does someone hear a teenager or a young man from – Pasadena or the Inland Empire like how do they hear you to not not to where you are today but how do you get a crease that somebody hears what's going on with you oh you mean just like how did I get hurt yeah I mean honestly it's like kind of the same thing like we kind of looked at MySpace and all these things right. as like See? what we feel like TikTok is or now like or whatever it's just like and I just used any avenue, bro. Like, I used to just, like, put music on my MySpace constantly, up, update my sounds, like, just, like, post bulletins, whatever it was. And it, I finally got some attention. And um, mad people was hitting me up. But when Polo the Don hit me right. up, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's how I really changed. And is that when you move, you move out? I moved to Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? He how was, old were you when you moved to Atlanta? I was 19. That's yeah, crazy, I though. Was 19. Can yeah. you imagine your little one coming to you at 19 and saying, I want to move out of the state? Crazy, crazy. Yeah. I remember some of my family members literally crying. I'm like, why? Why is y'all crying? But it's like uh, they saw me just like be in this one space and raise me, and it's like now I'm just like fully independent. And Polo gave me a real once in a lifetime opportunity, man. Just like having a free studio, different writers, different artists coming through. I really got to, that was my my paying my tuition. That was yeah. my college years, you know. Yeah. What I mean? Even though I didn't go to college. How scary is that though? When you step out on faith, even if you can't see the whole staircase, when you just because you know what, it's easy to stay at home. Yeah. And you thought moving from Pasadena to the IE was a trip. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm exactly, saying? Yeah, so sure. how is it when you go from, you know, Cali, where you know, and this is like, you know, it's, it's really turf. And right. then you say, man, I'm going to get up and go to Atlanta. Man, by that time, I just was so like, I got to make it. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I want to be a part right. of this. I was, whatever the case was, I'm, I was going to run with it. And Polo it was, was easy killing. Decision? Polo was oh, yeah. killing at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like to have an opportunity to study up under him. That was priceless. How did Polo to Don, how did Polo find you? MySpace. He hit me Damn. on MySpace. Yeah. Yep. He hit me up. It's funny because I, I heard the <sighs> song he did for Fergie. It was the oh, London man. Bridge. Yeah. Joint. And I was Fergie like, who, Ferg, who, did, he- yeah, who, who did that beat? And so I found, looked it up, found him on MySpace. And uh, I just re- friend requested him. I didn't even hit him. He hit me the next morning like, yo, like, let's lock in with the whoop. And it's just like, he, he flew out to LA. We linked up and it was just like the rest of hey, history. Hey man, in a world of MySpace, and in a world of everybody want to be in the business and not that how did that happen? But you got to think, bro, like like now when, when we say hit boy, people know the name. Crazy. Are how, like how would somebody even like as much as you're working mm. and as much as Polo the Don was working then? Yeah. How do you direct your attention to this dude off of MySpace. No, no, you know crazy. what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that's <laughs> like, crazy, but that's, that lets you know people be paying attention and just be mindful of that. Like, yeah. if you're posting content, make it sh- make sure it's your best. If you're posting music, whatever you're doing, just make sure it's the best that you can possibly be doing in the moment. Were there you know? early, because f- I know that once you get in and there's, you know, these ups and downs and these roller coasters, but yeah. early on, are there frustrations where you say like, man, I'm not eating off of this? Or do, do you ever at any point... Yeah. I think mean, like for sure. No, nah, right. I mean it's just like it's funny because Hit Boy used to be Hit Boys. It was two of us. So 
Steve Russell, who was also a part of True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, Hell that's yeah. That's somebody who was heavy in production doing B2K, yeah, man. Marcus Houston, Omarion, just a lot of R&B stuff. He, I used to beg and plead with this dude, like, let me pull up to the studio. He had the studio off Kawanga at Edmonds Towers, and I was 16 at the time. And I just was like, yo, I'm going to bring my homeboy. So he started pulling up with me. And Steve used to tell me, like, bro, this whole game is just about hits. So I told the homie, like, let's call ourselves Hit Boys. You know what I mean? We 16 years old at the time. And, um, bro, we just, damn, I just lost my tr- no, you, train you, of thought. No, you're saying that Steve was telling you that yeah, this yeah, is about hits. Like, just like, yeah, you pull up with your boy and y'all Hit Boys at the time. Exactly. So it's just like. I don't know, bro. Yeah. So <laughs> when, when when you go from that and and you listen to Steve and you go to go to Hit Boys, yeah. what happened with your partner that was made that's it plural? What, that's what my thought was. <laughs> yeah. Like he he actually came to me when we was like eighteen and told me like, bro, I'm not making no money off this. Yeah, like I, I'm that's that quit. life. But he actually did not quit. He actually signed with some people that I introduced him to. Like he was just like kind of trying to kick me to the curb. You know oh. what I mean? So just for it to play out like this is crazy. He showed you, huh? Yeah. Nah, <laughs> nice, nice, nah. yeah he, damn, hey, amen. Oh. Hey, man, that's that kind of thing. You know how you make a decision and it's on you all the time? Like, even when you go to take a piss, he'll probably wake up like, man, fuck! <laughs> Not for real. Yeah, that's man. Funny. Hey, man, but but you know what? I guess that that was meant to just not be yours, but it was meant to be yours, bro. <clears throat> nah, for you sure. You know, and sometimes, sure. man, it's hard to have an and. Like, I've been in radio for years, right? And there's Big Boy's Neighborhood, right? But if I would have had an and and where I had an equal partner, then I got to worry, like, are you showing up? Mm -hmm. Are you still in the game? Do you have this? Mm -hmm. Is your life right? You know what I'm saying? So with you, you know, I got to be at the studio at what time? Okay, I'll be there. I got to pull up at what? Okay, I'll be there. I got to fly to where? Okay, I'll be there. Sometimes the and or the plural doesn't have that same drive that Mm -hmm. you have. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you when you working towards something. That's nah, crazy, man. Everything really play out how I supposed to. Cause I I looked at this dude like he was like a uh you know he played in church, so he was cold on the keys. So that right. you could just imagine the R and B dudes at the time was loving him, and I'm still trying to work on my craft. I'm still trying to get nice on the keys and nice with the beats, as nice as he was, and just to see, man, it's just played out so many times. So like you that, almost man. like lost an identity too. You know nah, what I'm saying? Sure. Where yeah. it's like, man, it's us, and mm-hmm. then you know. Know, at that point, was he kind of leading as far as like when it came yeah, to like yeah. when us playing, but with us making beats, like he would do like the heavy lifting and he was like, com- like he was playing keys since probably eight years old, so he was real cold. And I just I was like, I'm not, I'll never be on this dude level. And just to see where it's at now yeah. is insane, man. Hey, man, at that point, did you ever think like, not that you give up, but it, but it, it had to oh, feel yeah, like yeah, it put sure. you some paces for back? Sure. No, nah, that's that, that shit was. Heartbreaking, yeah. you know what I mean? Do it make you not want to be so much in collaborations or in that business with somebody else? <clears throat> Man, just at the point I'm at right now, just like everything I didn't experience, I do like to collaborate a lot by myself. Even though I'm open to it, I got co-producers on certain joints that I put out, but mm-hmm. that I think maybe but that's not why like that's team, why yeah, that's that's why the way that's why I am the way I am now. Just like I just be in the studio, dolo, making it work with the artists. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Hey man, mm-hmm. it, when you when you first start off, and it's like I don't know if you slang a beats through you know MySpace, anybody could jump hand on, in hand, whatever. Yeah, bro. you know whatever. what I'm saying. Yeah. When do you get that first look? Where it's like, is is it Polo to Don? It actually was a little before that. It's funny because um, Ike Turner Jr. Oh. Ike Turner's son was living in the IE, and I somehow connected with him. He was like doing gospel rap, so he wanted some beats. Linked with him, and he was like, "Yo, I got a studio in Studio City. I'm a." Uh, pull up to you should pull up with me so like he in the studio recording he like had got from me, the ie to he, studio city exactly Damn. he got me waiting in the lobby but i see it's a dvd player in there and i got my beats on cd at the time so i just put my beats on and anybody that's walking through i'm trying to get their attention long story short i'm in there probably like five six hours dolo just like playing the music chilling Ty Dolla Sign walked through. This i'm 18 neo walked through i connected oh. with all these people in one day just like getting that opportunity to be in the studio and just like being annoying about playing my music like wherever I could on a DVD player at the time. Did know? it mean anything at that time? Did you see something instant from from there? I mean, I just knew I had some some good beats and yeah. I was like, if I can get these to the right artists, I'm going to be straight. So as soon as I saw them dudes, I just was like, oh yeah, it's on. You know what what I mean? was your first placement? 
my first uh, professional placement yeah. was on Jennifer Lopez on a, a song called uh, Forever. A song called Forever off the album uh, Brave, 2007. Yeah. 2007? Mm-hmm. Man, and you, and you know what's crazy, man, is how long that road has been. Crazy. Hey, man, when you crazy. get a Jennifer Lopez p- a placement <laughs> in 2007, do you think like, man, I'm on? Oh, yeah. For yeah, sure. and that's early. For sure, that's early. That's <laughs> yeah. early. Just the fact that I could go to Best Buy at the time, open the CD, because I, ta- I caught the tail end of what you was mm-hmm. talking about of going in the store, yeah. really being excited to read the credits, you know, so I caught the tail end of myself getting into the game and seeing myself in the credits. So I used to go buy the CDs, give them to the family, whatever the case was. How did that happen? Through the polo situation. Really, he though? He gave me my publishing deal, and my publisher set up some sessions with some writers, and they wrote a song, and she heard it last minute before she turned her album in. And the crazy part is I got some new music with J-Lo. Mm. So we just made it within, like, the last, like, six months, Full and circle. I just met her, like, six months ago. So you, you know I mean? just, like, in the same room. Now, like I just got in the same room with her. This was just all by just passing it, emailing it from back in the day. So Amen. I got now, to tell her, like, yo, you, you was my first, you know what I'm saying? You got my first placement. Is the is the And I hear you speak on, like, the publishing deal. And not yeah. that that came from Polo to Don, but is that that deal? That's that deal. Oh, That's that, that deal. And I'm still in that deal since 07. I'm about to be out of it soon. It's been... It's, it's been it's been redone a couple times, but just not to the point of where it's completely updated. But I feel good. I'm making a lot of music, and within yeah. the next you know couple years, I'm gonna be straight straight. And explain with, with, without I, I don't know if it's throwing anybody under the bus, so, so on and so forth. But at 19, you get a publishing deal, right? And at that point, man, you know, not that we're ready to sign anything, but we're young. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Sure. We don't know. You know, don't and, really have the guidance. You know yeah, what I mean? man. And so you get you get into a deal that still kind of holds in place today. Mm-hmm. And how if you don't mind my asking, how old are you today? I'm 35. Okay, so so from 19 to 35, yeah, you've been in this bad, same mediocre, right. same deal, mm-hmm. right? With all these hit records, crazy. And I'm pretty sure when you think about the Jay Z's and the Kanye's of the world yeah. that know deals. This deal must be a mother effort. I've, because I mean, Jay Z himself told me like, bro, this is a terrible deal you know what i mean so and he actually helped me make some amendments in my deal so shout out to him but it's just like crazy man but it's like this i was 19 polo was 25 when i signed to him so i didn't i don't think he consciously was like let's give this kid a bad deal it's more so like the corporation yeah the the parent universal music publishing group and all them just like they know exactly what they doing you know what I mean? So it's like, I feel like Polo was just like, man, I'm, I'm hot. Let me go get some talent. He's, he signed a bunch of people. I'm not the right. only person. It's just like, you know, it's just crazy. Hey, man, when, when, you, when you look at it, even now, and you've been looking at it for years, it's cost a lot, though, right? As nah, far as sure. like what, what could have been and what is. Mm-hmm. Damn. For sure. Nah, definitely. You know, people, they get in the game, they get a couple hits, they can go get a $10 million bag, you know what I'm saying, on some admin or whatever the case is. I haven't been in that position to even, like, eat how I'm supposed to eat. You know, not to say, I'm, I've trust me, I'm good. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I've eaten really good, but I've just seen some of my counterparts who came in and might even had less hits than me that just was able to go you know, had they structure right. So it just right. it just is what it is. But I just know that I'm right on time. And like, man, as soon as my deal is up, like, you know, it's just going to be A1. It's going to be different. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'll be like, man, hit, come in for an interview. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, 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 big boy. You know? <laughs> nah, man, this is, you know, like I said, bro, it's an honor for real. Man, no, nah, it's, it's an honor to have you in, bro. And also just just to see the work. And you know, it's a trip, man. When, when you think about like Hit Boy, right? There is so many accolades and so many, and I know it sounds cliche, but there's so many hits. Word. But the one thing that I enjoy about you as well is that there's not, or for me, I don't hear a hit boy sound. You know what right. I'm saying? You yeah. know how there's some people, you're like, oh, that's them, you know, by the drum kick or, you right, know, by, right, right. or they tease you with something. That's why I feel like I'm still here. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like I'm able to, I just was on Beyonce album. Yeah. I got stuff oh. coming out with Don Tolliver in two days. Like yeah, his, man, his congrats to y'all on that too. Out, uh, Music Soul Child album is coming out. So I didn't get pigeonholed into people feeling like they can't right. reach out to me because my sound is dead or, or, or outdated. Like, it's just like, man people hearing me writing the current this is where i'm at creatively i didn't get stuck into one box and that's been a blessing at first i, I looked at it as kind of a curse because it's like damn people not connecting with my brand as much as they could be you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like i feel like bro like i still to this day haven't heard 
no song that anybody could perform 10 to 12 times back to back to back oh to back like God. niggas in Paris. You know yeah, what I mean? man. All the music that's been made since, what's that's been, 12 years now? I still ain't heard one song, so it's like, you know what I mean? It's just, hey, it's man, just different. How did that N-word in Paris, how did that come about? Because when you when you know it early on, like we press play on that. Mm-hmm. And we even did the same thing in the radio. When they went on tour and they was like breaking records, like, mm-hmm. oh, we doing it 15, 16, 17. Yeah. We were doing that in radio right. too, That's where crazy. I'd be like, put, put it on again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So how did that beat? You know, how did you work that and how did that get to Kanye and Jay Z? For like a Watch the Throne project. It's crazy because I had actual sessions with them for Watch the Throne, like in the room with Jay Z, Kanye. Like we did other songs that never made it nowhere. Niggas in Paris was just an email beat. I just emailed it to Kanye months prior, and uh, I'm thinking I'm hype on the joints that we was making, like in the room together. Like, bro, it's just crazy how it play out. Like I, I'm like for an email beat to like turn out to be basically my biggest song ever it's just crazy you know? when did and you just know you know the times like you know what I mean? when did you know it's gonna be placed at, as such you know what I'm saying because if you say man we were in the room creating mm-hmm. and then I just like email him this one does Kanye get back at you and say man I think we got one or do you hear yeah, it they nah, got vocals I, on I, it already I wish I still had I had a screenshot of the uh, I used to have this Blackberry and he used to email me on it and he was like bro when this song come out, like, life is it's, it's going to change for you. You know what I mean? Like, he was talking like that. He was like, trust me, bro. This joint is out of here. I, I hadn't even heard it. They did it in Paris. So, oh my you God. know what I mean? <laughs> it just was crazy. He was emailing me, telling me, and um, I flew out to uh, the listening party in New York. And as soon as it come on, like, I remember Khaled was sitting next to me. It was oh a my room Lord, full of people. Bro. Everybody stood up, lit up. I was like, oh, this is this How did you build real. that? Because when you hear that, then, then. Like, how, do you build that at the house, the studio? That, do was, you at know my, that was at my mom's crib, just literally. Like, a um, lot of a lot of joints. Did it like, feel different or no? Nah? To be honest, man, yeah. it was just another beat. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, yeah. And honestly, I was a little just <clears throat> taken back because I had a bunch of other instruments I had, you know, put on top of that beat. Kanye stripped all that stuff away, threw it away, and kept the simple melody with the drums. And Did you feel like he messed your record up at first? Mm- at first, yeah. just as a creative, I'm yeah. like, what's that about? You, right, know you, what t- mean? you telling my kid, my ta- baby ugly? It taught me a lot, bro. It just taught me, like, just, you know, you got to just make space for the artist. Yeah. Hey, man, you ever heard when Jeezy explains that, uh, da, da, wait till yeah, I get. Uh-huh. Yeah. And how he was saying that it was like for him, it was him and T.I. Yeah. And they put Kanye on it. And then Kanye, Kanye added it, this, that, and the uh, other. And he mm. was like, nah, man, I can't have it. You know, and mm. he called the record off. Crazy. And so he said Kanye was the, asked him, could he have it? Crazy. And and took it and <laughs> ran with it. He right. was like, man, if I would have known. Yeah. If I would have right. known. Yes. Hey, man. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to tagging beats. Yeah. Man. And you got to think with like, with, with like a Ninjas in Paris, you uh-huh. know, early work like that. You didn't tag beats. Right. And was mm-hmm. that because Kanye... Yeah, that, that I mean that was part partially. Like it was certain beats that I wouldn't put my tag on, and um, but he was definitely a major influence to be like, yo, he was like tags is corny, you know what I mean? Like don't you shouldn't use tags, and I just like really ran with that yeah. for some years. And plus that's Ye telling you that. And then like a year later, I see Mike Will all Mike over Will the radio, made it. Metro yeah. Boom, and I'm <laughs> seeing Boomin. everybody like with their tags on the radio popping. I'm like, that's Mustard, crazy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. Hey man, so yeah. did you ever physically choke Kanye? Or you just understood like uh, that's funny. Man. Hey, but but no, you you got to think because if 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 N word in Paris had been tagged, yeah. You know uh, what I'm saying? Nah, for sure. Just even just like, you know how you can go out and get a bag for DJing when you got a, a record on radio or whatever. Yeah. Like, I could have been just doing so much more stuff, you know what I mean? But it all plays it, it, a high But it is to. what it is, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah it exactly. definitely is what it mm-hmm. is, too, man. Mm-hmm. I, I would rather take it than not have it at all. Oh, yeah, no. Nah, 1,000%. Hell, yeah. 1, Hell yeah. How, how does Kanye, Jay-Z, Big Sean, or anyone early on, how do they find you? Is that uh, all- just... Uh, well, actually, Kanye, I used to work at the studio a lot called Record Plant. Mm-hmm. I first met him up there. I was doing, um, I met Kanye through Pharrell because I was producing for Tiana Taylor. Oh, yeah. Tiana was coming down there to Atlanta to work with me through Polo. And How long were you in Atlanta? I was there for like three years. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, three years. So she was coming down there. I flew out to L.A. and Pharrell was working in the studio next door to mine. You know what I mean? And so we was cool. 
Kanye comes in, and that's my first time meeting him through Pharrell. And I had a beat. I, this was beat CD era, so I had the CD. I was like, yo, I got to play this beat right now. And I put this beat on, and they both freestyled to it, like, from the time it came on till it went off. And that was just, like, a crazy moment for me. You know what I mean? So years later, I ended up meeting Kanye's cousin, my homeboy Ricky. He's uh-huh. from the oh, IE, too. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. met him. He... uh Linked me with Kanye. He said that Kanye was looking for beats and new producers, and I just started sending just beat after beat. You know what I mean? And it just finally happened. I ended up doing this song called Christmas in Harlem mm-hmm. with Kanye, and that was the first collaboration. And you take that mm. and you run with it. I ran with it because um, I'm just like, bro, like I just know I can give him some some joints. You what know what I mean? What put you in the good music room? That was uh, me sending him beats to Ricky, linking with Ricky. You know what I mean? And uh, he told me that Kanye wanted to actually tap in with me so he flew me overseas to abu dhabi and we were supposed to be there for like um this is my first time out the country by the way it's like 16 hour flight we're supposed to be over there for like a week week and a half like the next day he like bro we going back to the states i'm not i'm over this you're like vibe. man i've been on this plane I'm for like, 16 what? and that's kanye though right that's kanye hey, bro i know it very well uh, too yeah why right, you didn't flew out yeah. man let me tell you i was at coachella one year right and my phone kept blowing i'm like ah damn Kanye. Yeah. He was like, where you at? I'm like, man, I'm at Coachella. He wanted me to go from there and get on a plane and go to Africa. Oh, wow. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm at Coachella, man. <laughs> nah, so he, I know how it is when of, you say, got, man, we're, we're in Abu Dhabi. You're like, man, I'm about to rest out, mm-hmm. work. He's like, nah, we're going back. You're like, man, Crazy. I could have bought a carry-on. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. <laughs> so do you do y'all immediately come back because you follow the, the vibe? The next day we came, uh, we went to New York. It was a crazy snowstorm going on, but that was my first time meeting Jay Z, meeting Beyonce, all these people just and Kanye just bigging me up to everybody. Like it was just surreal, you know what I mean? Yeah, and when when you in the room, can you recognize the greatness in there? Because sometimes, man, even now, bro, I get in the room and I'm like not questioning, but like, am I supposed to be in this room? Yeah, nah, for sure. But you trip sure. that yeah. I'm in this room. Nah, for sure. So early on, when you in the room with the Jay Z's, Beyonce's, and mm-hmm. Kanye's and stuff. You deserve to be in there, but are you still tripping like? Oh man, yeah, I'm in nah, this room I still here. was a little just yeah. walking on eggs. Yeah, I was a little are you timid, timid? You know what I mean? Boom. Just like I don't know, but Kanye was just showing mad love and just introducing me to everybody, just like bigging me up. So I just was like, I had Why the confidence. Why do you think Kanye wasn't afraid of your greatness? You know how sometimes we try to suppress. <clears throat> someone else or we say man i did it or you know what i'm saying like i honestly just feel like he thought my beats could help him at the moment right. you know? <laughs> yeah. you know, kanye, right. i love kanye it man, ain't gonna hurt him it. yeah so, so now when you when you start to get success you know what i'm saying what uh-huh. does that feel like did, did at one point did you have to kind of check yourself too because did you at any time believe the headlines and you know what i'm saying like nah, was it I a mean, trip to be that guy it, it was it was definitely like you know you got to go through your ego trip yeah here and there. like you go to that <clears throat> just those points where you think you just know it all you think you got it all figured out and then yeah. the game flip on you yeah. you know what i mean do so, you think it lasts forever you at think, that moment, at that you time, think, you think that bread and that 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 radio play and all that shit for to just be nonstop, yeah. but it's you got to really, really work for that. You know, when what I mean? and, and, and I can't recall because you probably got a different time of when it felt different, mm-hmm. but if it, it feels like you always had something on air or you always had something, mm-hmm. well, so when do you feel like? It's it's not what it was. Um, I feel like maybe like 2016, 2017, you know what I mean? Just like I had stuff going. Like I, I helped out with the Sorry record on Beyonce mm. Lemonade, you know what I mean? That was playing a little bit on radio. But Hey, man, when you do Lemonade, <clears throat> do you hear the vocals or you just send them the song? When um, you hit, do like... On I mean, what the Beyonce stuff, it's just like more so... You got to send them beats. And yeah. just like, oh, but you don't yeah. hear like the song because that was an album that came out and we were all like, what the fuck? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Where did this come I, I, from? I heard, yeah. actually heard the Sorry demo, not with her on it. But right. Somebody but you else's. knew the content and everything? Yeah. yeah, yeah did yeah. you ever call Jay like, hey, man, be careful, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's funny. Bro. What did you do, man? Something going down, no, bro. Funny. I'm hearing these songs. I didn't know like because, you know, that was. You didn't know the whole body yeah, of work. Yeah, the Sorry joint ain't so. Mm-hmm. You know, right. deep and personal. Even though I got little parts in there, like right. the, uh, what she had said, the Becky with, with the, the good, good hair. hair that's that the one. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, that, I mean, you know. that's the one that people bring up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, maybe when I was working on it, that line was right like, yeah. or something. But you know, yeah, what I mean? man. Yeah. So, so when you see something like that, and you know, like, okay, well, I got this placement. 
I'm working with Beyonce. And then you say around that time, you still feel like what it, was, it wasn't it, what it was. Exactly, because I got spoiled. Oh. I, I was watching, you know, Kanye and Jay perform my song 12 times a night. So anything that didn't feel that monumental right. felt like a, a disappointment yeah, or a failure Yeah, so you're in competition me. with yourself. Exactly. Right. And that's what I didn't realize. Like, I'm just like... I didn't know that it was just like, bro, it's not that easy to do that. You know what I mean? Because it still ain't been done to this day, like I said. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. By no one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is is it harder to rec not recreate the magic? But now do you go in with a beat? Probably a little different now because you got years that's removed from mm -hmm. that. But did you go back in with a pressure on yourself? For a minute, I did. You know what I mean? I even try to do beats that sounded like you know niggas in paris or sounded like other you know radio joints that i had done and right that, that looking for that it. never panned out for me it's right. always when i'm just being my most authentic creative self in the room just vibing those the beats people love you gotta learn and you have to relearn that huh yeah for sure yeah because sure. uh, and of course early on that's just natural you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and then something comes in and it's like okay well maybe there's a formula to this but then you right. realize that there is no real formula exactly and then being able to be around people like kanye you see how he move how he operate he got a whole team of people that's you know rightfully doing what they supposed to be doing you think you gotta kind of get this adapt the same things that he doing right, when it's like, right. nah, that's not what got me here like what got me here was like damn near being in a room just making beats by myself so i need to lock in on that and that's what i've been doing these last few years and i'm i'm running through albums with people man yeah. it's just like when they come through they might be one just one joint they leave out with an ep or album you know most hey of the man time. how was it with nas because mm -hmm. you got to think nas is like I mean that that that's yeah. that's a god mc bro yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. and even before you get with nas there's so much with Nas already. Yeah, and you yeah. got to think, is there a pressure with working with a gym like Nas? Because you can't give anything to Nas that's going to tarnish what Nas I is know. to us. Right, exactly. And, I, you know, coming from being signed to Kanye, Kanye had did his last album. Yeah. So my album was the next album after Kanye. That was, a pr you know, that was pressure. Yeah. It was the Nas fans. It's like, what's he doing working with this newer dude? Like, yeah. this dude from the West Coast. And then, you know rightfully what I mean? so, too, man. Like, I enjoyed the Tiana Taylor. I like that sevens that was going down. Even mm -hmm. when, when he came yeah. to with, mm -hmm. with Nas, right? Mm -hmm. But critically, people kind of came at yeah, they had a huge, for the way that, high expectation for that. For that. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. And so now when you come in, it's like you're you're almost thinking like, man, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? From right. the outside yeah, people that's sure. looking in. Yeah. Did you feel that pressure early on hit? I definitely seen that pressure just from the social media, just like people doing interviews, podcasts, like, man, we don't know about this, man. Like, you know what I mean? And then when it come out, all them people retracted their <laughs> yeah. statements. Oh, yeah. It was just like this crazy outpouring of love. And that just gave me more confidence and inspiration to keep going, you know? Yeah. Do, do, but do you at one point, not that you feel it, but you saw it. Because yeah, you say I you see, seen I saw it. I heard it. I, I felt it. So, you know, but I also was listening to the music. And right. I know how much work we had put in. So I felt good about it. You know? Yeah, I mean? yeah. But it just was like, you want to see how the people feel about it. But also, man, and, and it's good when you get a real feed and a real radar on something. Yeah. But now, bro, people... They say, man, that album is whack. You like the album ain't out there. Oh, they know you. <laughs> uh, right. no, you know, sure. like yeah. people go in first within the, negative within, within the first five minutes. People on Twitter, oh, this is trash. Yeah. It just dropped at twelve. It's twelve oh five. Yeah, like, man. Know, like, man. oh, it's trash. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Can't put emojis next to it. So you dealing with that because I I come from the cloth of you know source of five mics and you know what I'm saying. And mm -hmm. now everybody's a critic. Oh, yeah. Everybody can yeah. turn on something and have a mm -hmm. podcast or a video or a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. and A viral tweet. Oh, whatever. man. Yeah, yeah so, mm -hmm. so not only are you working and and working hard but now you got all these also pe these some some of these knuckleheads that's yeah. in the game too bro that right. that's not even cut from the cloth of being able to Crazy. say something about a nas and a hit boy and things but it, it it's the game yeah it's, i used to, i used to let that stuff bother me early on right. just getting adjusted to social media getting adjusted to my position in the game but now bro whether it's good or bad i just take it with a grain of salt you know what i mean it ain't just like 
I don't take it too personal, whether it's the, right. the praise or the negative stuff. Like, it's just, that's your perspective. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, and I even gain perspective from sometimes the negative stuff. I'm like, okay, maybe I can work on this part of my game. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I'm always like, just like you got that picture of Kobe. Like, I'm on some Mamba mentality. Yeah, I'm man. just like, you got it. I'm, I'm crazy. I'm, I met Kobe. The first time I met Kobe, I met him a couple times. Uh, they had just finished doing Niggas in Paris for like the 12th time. And... <laughs> I'm like, yeah, telling Kobe, like, yeah, I did that record. I did this. You know what I mean? He like, okay, cool. What's next? You damn. know what I mean? Like, it like was damn, like, Kobe, can I have this? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's the first thing he, he said. He didn't say it in that breath. Like, like it was he like said that it, quick. Nah, he said it like, yeah, that's cool. Like, what's next? Like, you know what I mean? I'm just like, damn, that just put a lot in perspective. <laughs> Hell yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. Hey, man, when he said that, do you pause a little bit first? A like, little, you're like yeah, like, what is next? Damn, like, that's crazy. Yeah, hey, man, and sure. that's one of them things I be rolling through the crib like, damn. <laughs> Got you all messed up. <laughs> like, like, hell yeah, man. Yeah, you. Oh, oh, you hear that? Yeah, yeah, Kobe. That's me. That's me right there. Yeah. What's next? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. A whole lot. Got you know what I'm saying, man. Fast forward me to uh, to Nipsey, man. How did your relationship with with the great? How did that come together? Man, just being around doing music in L. A. You know what I mean, and uh. We had did something. Actually, my boy Chasing Cash was cool with the homie Johnny Shipes, who Nipsey used to be signed to mm-hmm. way, way mm-hmm. back. And um, we had we was doing beats. He sent a beat that we did, and he used it on, uh, I think, Bullets Ain't Got No Name, mm-hmm. Volume 2. It was a song called Thuggin' with Boozy, featuring mm-hmm. Boozy. This way back. So it was initially Chasing Cash that really put me on with Nip. And then when I um, when I got out here just linking with him, uh, we tapped in He came to my studio I wanted to put him on the record He wanted some stuff for me I put him on one of my joints With, with me rapping And uh, then he put me on Mailbox Money mm. And a couple other joints And leading up to Racks in the Middle We had we did I didn't work on Victory Lap You know what I mean I was working with him Before he really was in that process And you know Right after So We linked up didn't even like, you know, I didn't know how it was going to go. He pulled up to my studio. I played him some ideas, and the first idea was Racks in the Middle. It first just, it idea? Just, it just had Roddy on it. And mm-hmm. uh, this record was actually supposed to come out. It was supposed to come out, me featuring Roddy. You know how the producers put their records out featuring artists? Right. It was supposed to be that scenario. And he heard it, told me to run it back. The second time, he like, nah, bro, can, can I please have his record? And I was hey, like, man, when you say it was you and and Roddy at first, yeah. what, what, what was the verses? It was Roddy on the verse. Oh, so he was doing, he did yeah. the whole song. The whole song, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Was it called Racks in the Middle then? It was called Racks in the Middle, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. So then you so you had the verses. Roddy, of course, is on the hook. Mm-hmm. Nip come and hear it as opposed to saying, let me jump on this or let yeah, me get said, a let verse. Let me have it. Let <laughs> me have it. Yeah. How hard is it to take your baby and hand that to somebody else as well? At that point, I just was like in that mode of like, I'm trying to get everything off because gotcha. I was trying to catch up to myself in the time I felt like I lost just doing just too much with my time. And uh, I just was like, let's do it. You know what I mean? And um, Do you tell Roddy it, it's, it's now a Nipsey It was record? more so my team. Like the label had start, started already clearing the record with just Roddy on it. Mm-hmm. So when I told them, they like, bro, like, what, do you, what are you <laughs> yeah. doing? You know what I like, mean? This is train, this, I just was like, this, has, this ship has sailed. It's going to work out. You know what I mean? And. Yeah, bro, it just it just was a process, man. That shit was ill. Did you know that it was a special record when you heard it come back from Nipsey? Bro, he did it right there in front of me. He did every verse. I sat right by him, you know what I'm saying? Like he So did it, it at wasn't a let me take it back. Nah, it wasn't. He was like, I'm pulling up on you every day till this joint is done. So he came to my studio and did the first verse. You know, came back a day later, did the second verse. It was like a week long process. Could of, you hear it in his voice too? Because even what Nip did bro, with his voice on that one, bro, nuts. That, it was different. It was yeah. the energy was just different, bro. It was like a real like movie if I think about it back. Like it was like when he was doing the verse, talking about his homie Fats, yeah. you know, rest in peace. He had his hoodie wrapped up, and it's like he was crying tears. You know what I mean? Literally like crying tears in my studio, like doing the record, letting his emotions out, and just really being a man about. The situation, like just leaving it all in the stool. Hey Amen. And and you see that when you see that, do you just back kind of back away and let let people yeah, have yeah, that you know, moment? That's a, that's a personal moment for yeah. sure. You know, he really thinking about his real friend that 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 passed. You know what I mean? So it's just like that was that was that was crazy. That's and, how I knew it was real. And I hear that Nip, he also worked hard. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. when you say 
it took about what a week, week and about a half a week. to record that song. Because it's three verses. You know, yeah. people barely do three verses now. Like you get maybe two. Sometimes it's one verse and a couple of hooks. Right. He was like he adamant about, about the... like he was like, bro, I gotta put three verses on it. Cause after he did the second verse, I was like, bro, it's done. It's good. He like, nah, bro, I got more to say. Like, I gotta put a third verse on this. Hey man, and when you when you hear back and before you introduce it to the public. Did that record, like I said, it did it feel special? No, like, it was crazy. We yeah. had so many people pulling up to the studio. It was like a real vibe, and everybody reacted to it the way we re we reacted to it. They just loved it off rip. You hey know man, I mean? and and when you fast forward, and we do lose Nip, and that record, bro, is like that. I think that's a record that will forever have a stamp to it as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. When when you first hear that that we lost Nip and you have this great body of music, <sighs> does it take you back to that studio and the hoodie? And Man, listen, that's, that's my studio I work in still to this day. I've been there for the last five years. I got picked, I got a whole, you know, three Nipsey pictures in my studio now. And I can't help but to think about him. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, just like... I'm looking at the, the the small area where we was in, really just putting them emotions into the beat, into the song, into the lyrics. Like, it's just, it's surreal. Hey, man, and hit when you're in and you're working with somebody that intimate like Nip, you, do you feel like you learn more about that person in that environment? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, for sure. For sure. I just remember little conversations and yeah. him being like, bro, like people don't even know. Like I'm really like, I'm a songwriter more than a rapper. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I really make songs, you know what I mean? And it's crazy because me, that's what me and the Nas thing is, is built off. It's not just the fact that Nas is going to get in the studio and rap. We really making joints with replay value, with replay value that you can really vibe to. You know what I mean? Just good songs. Hey man, when you do see like, a Nas or a Nip, like, I, and I don't know if they in the room or you know how you see a movie and they're behind glass. Now, uh -huh. most people are in the room with you now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But when you see that person on your on, on a mic, is that still surreal to you where it's like, it almost feels like, man, this is a dream? Nah, for sure. Yeah. And it's like, you got to really be appreciative of the moment and, and understand like what's going on. Like with the Nas stuff, I'm literally right here. I'm, I'm engineering him. I'm not just making a beat. Like I'm, making a beat, loading it up. I'm recording him, making the song sound decent enough for an engineer to come in and tune it up and make it right, right, but I'm hands-on, you know what Man, I mean? Man, how do you tell Nas to go back in, uh, the, <laughs> go back in the booth? I just had to or, honestly just, yeah. just start just being like, I'm going to just do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Regardless, we know his statue. We can get a better take. We know his, or we know his level, but it's like, my job is to be the best producer I could be right, right. now. So I'm going to tell him, like, y'all feel like you can recut this line or you should rework this line and the beautiful thing about it and the fact that we four albums in is he's open to listening. You know what I mean? Yeah. He open to it. Hey Amen. And when you say four albums in, one album is like, oh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And did y'all y'all got the Grammy off, off of the first album? Hey Amen. And, and 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 if I'm not mistaken, was that Nas first? That was his first. Yeah, my third. Crazy. And and especially for somebody that wasn't looking for it. You yeah, know, exactly. because Nas yeah, had yeah. all the hip hop accolades, but yeah, yeah. accolades, period. But to get that also is like, okay. You, yeah. you, and, and for it to come so far into his career. Yeah. You know, exactly. where are your, you got three Grammys. How right. many times you nominated? Over a nominated about a dozen? Ten. ten? ten. Right. Mm -hmm. Where are your Grammys at? Without, they, I mean, there's they, so much going they, on. They, uh -oh. they in my studio. <laughs> they right in my studio, bro. Like, and that's, that's the beautiful thing. Like, when young artists come through who ain't never seen a Grammy in person, they get extra motivation. Yeah, they always that's their like, first can I, time. Can I take a picture of the Grammy or stuff like that? Where it's like, man, like, this, that's what it's for. Hey, man, when you hear that you won a Grammy, and when you think back all the way to, you know, the kid focus, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The the rapping, going in through, you mm -hmm. know, getting your equipment, you know, getting on uh, MySpace, right. and then you hear Grammy Award winning. Yeah. What does that feel like? Because everybody don't have one. I know. That's yeah. what's crazy. I mean, Tupac ain't even got a right. Grammy. Like that's, Snoop don't have yeah, his nah, Grammy. Exactly. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's man. Sure. So what does that feel like? I mean, it's just like, man, it's really real. You know, it's really possible. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's just how I look at it. And it's you just make it makes you want more. Like right. you got I want more of these, so I better get back to what it got me here to get yeah. this one. And I know you don't walk by every day and kiss the damn thing. <laughs> but do are there times like I got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, right? That's big. I haven't That's went different. back and really looked at it, but there's yeah. sometimes two hit where I'm like, 
I got a star. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this is this is the kid from LA that was mm. homeless and this, that, and the third. Everything that everybody has a story. Beyond deserved, man. Man. Like, I just remember riding to school, listening to phone tap and listening to you. I, I I used I always like thought you was one of the funniest people ever, bro. Like, Thank you, you, bro. Hilarious. Man, man. Oh, you stop that, man. I am. Nah, for real. <laughs> <Nah, y'all. laughs> I am. And, and, and you know it's a trip though, man, is to to mean something. Yeah. To the culture as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and we've had people, man, that have come up and they say, Big, I used to listen to you, or I listened to you, or this, that. Uh -huh. And I never get like, Yeah, well, you should have. Uh -huh. Or I heard that uh -huh. before. Every time I hear it, bro, it's special. Yeah. Every time. And then I get people now hit that and say, Man, I'm going to be in there one day. And I say, Man, do you believe it? Right. And they're like, Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I'll see you, you know, uh -huh. I'll see you when you get there. And, and I've had people that come in, Kendrick. Ab, like so many people that that told me personally, mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna be in there one day. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, and, and now when we sit here and you've been listening to phone taps or rolling to school, mm -hmm. and now I'm a fan of yours. You that's, know what I'm saying? That's, like, that's ridiculous. like yeah, that's like ridiculous, man. Yeah, and, and, but but it's real when you think about man, like how much work you've put in, mm -hmm. and how much more work that we know you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because do do you feel like we've heard the best yet? Nah, yeah. I, I feel like I'm 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 still scratching the surface, yeah. man. Like as much stuff as I've done and you know, as much music is out, it's like, nah, I just know that I feel like I got better at making beats this week. You know yeah. what I mean? Literally. Yeah. Like, that's what I'll tell that's people. my approach. I'm like, I'm always under construction and yeah. I'm always learning, bro. And uh -huh. the one thing with me, no matter how many years I've been in radio, I make a mistake every day. What? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I learn mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. man. And the thing about what I do with radio too, man, and entertainment is I enjoy doing it. Yeah. You know, nah, and that's, even that's, last that's, night, yeah. like, I knew, like, probably how you was like, man, I got to go see Big Boy tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I'm sitting up saying, man, hits coming in tomorrow. Damn. You know crazy. what I'm saying? That's crazy. Like, and, and, and I'm making sure that we, 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 we straight from when you come in because we, I don't bring people in, man. For one, every interview I do is by choice. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I love to sure. honor people. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I love to honor people, man. So it is an honor and a pleasure to have you That's in the neighborhood, homie. That. I'm like, damn, like, man, I've been waiting for this opportunity for a minute, <laughs> man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. it's overdue, but we here. Like, it's, yeah. per it's, it's perfect timing right yeah, now. Yeah, man, God's timing, timing too, yeah. bro. What's uh -huh. your relationship with Kanye today? I mean... It's funny. Last time I saw him was around when I was working on Drillmatic for Game, mm -hmm. and we did the Easy hey man, record. Let me tell you, bro, and and we're gonna get back to it. That Game album, yeah. Drillmatic, is one of the most slept on, oh yeah, hardest you know, pieces of music. You know, Game. He gonna period. rap. He gonna rap, man. That, that hey dude man, to no end. Anybody that go maker. back to it and yeah. just listen to it, uh -huh. man. I hadn't been on on social media. For probably at that time, seven. I hadn't posted anything seven, eight months. Crazy. That was the only post that I put up one day. I was like, man, uh -huh. I'm sitting here listening to this is the most slept on Crazy. album yeah, nah, ever. For sure. I was there during that whole process. He had uh, the studio across from yeah. mine. So I'm just seeing the whole thing. This dude is a machine. Like, yeah, he, he is, goes back man. to back, just song after song. And he had me trying to keep up with him. Like every day he would uh, text me in the morning like, yo, bro, I need three new beats. So I would get to the studio before him, try to make them three beats so I can just keep placing joints. That Ended album up with like is six a, on the album. It's yeah. a masterpiece, bro. Word. That album is a masterpiece. So you say around that time, that was the last time. That was the uh, last time I uh, and that tapped was easy. in. Right. So, um, right, that's my boy's song. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, man, we just had a, you know, we was having real conversations, man. And uh, he was like, yeah, bro, like, I, you know, I, I wanted to hold you back. You know what I mean? Like, I, I wanted to, I, I tried to, like, stop basically my my advancement in the game type shit. But he was like, you took that. You took it. You know what I mean? You went and did your thing and you collected your Whatever you're supposed to collect, you right. know what I mean. He so said he, I tried to hold you back. Basically, right. yeah, for sure, yeah. So I mean, you know, that's just crazy. Just to see somebody that you always admire, and it's like I don't know what what it may be or how he felt or what the case is, but you know, Kanye, a real sporadic. Yeah. He was spitting out a lot of stuff, but he yeah. just threw that in the mix, like. He was making a point about something else. He was like, yeah, even with Hit Boy, like I tried to, you know, stop him, basically stop his shine or whatever the case is. He says something within right. the realm of that. And I was like, damn, I mean, he real enough to admit it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's 
I'm such a fan and right. I'm such a student. And you've been speaking so Kanye. well too. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Like you've been speaking so well about him. I'm so I'm so so much of a student of Kanye that I could never even any he's also a funny motherfucker too. He's yeah. a funny person too. <laughs> yeah, man. So I just love funny, cool people and you know, it'll what if if we supposed to link back up we right. gonna do that. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. And that's the same way I feel too, you know, because we we we're not in the best place. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and if the sun moving and stars, you know, yeah, if if they align, yeah. you know, I I'm not losing none. He not losing none. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. I'm eating. He be walking around West Hollywood, no security and all. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, catch yeah. You. Pull with some up. moon boots you know I mean? on. I'm like, Chocolate man, Woody. I need to get them moon boots, something in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, believe that, man. So so what's around the corner? And, and I know it sounds corny. People say, what's next? Yeah, yeah. But what's around the corner um, for hit? I got a couple joints on Don Tolliver album, like I said, coming Friday. His, his album is called Love Sick. Super talented dude. I got a full album with Music Soul Child dropping what in that March sound 10th. Like? It's sound like music man. Hey, man, yeah it's, man it's that, it's, and that's what I'm saying also that. like there's no box Yeah, there's no yeah. box bro that, that we can put you in and when you go into uh, with something like music you know music soul child for those that know yeah. when you go into a room with somebody that's seasoned like that too yeah. you know is is that you you already penetrated them rooms before but every time gotta be different nah for sure but he also approached me as you know being appreciative of what I was doing because right. he hit me like, yo, the stuff you're doing with Nas, bro, is crazy. Like, I got to connect with you. And that's, you know, it was kind of like that. And honestly, bro, like, I had so many ideas that was kind of in his vein that he just was picking beat after beat and he just was doing songs to him. And it just, we, we came up with this body of work. Hey, Hit, how do you tell someone no? Because uh, everybody, do, I'm pretty double. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? well, because I'm pretty sure, man. That and and, and and you know how when you come in and somebody you know helps you with something, uh, and then you you give that back because you know what that feeling feels like. But then at some point. You got to say no. Oh, you mean just like giving? Not even giving, but just like, hey, man, I need to get on one of them beats, man. All you know, right. everybody's in the business, well, man. I mean, yeah, I feel like I can't call it, man, because right. there be times where people will beg and beg to get in the studio. Then we get in and they don't do nothing. Mm. And then it's like people who wasn't even meant to be in my session. We end up running a whole right. EP or album. So. I just try not to have expectations ever. I just like let it play out. You know yeah, what I but mean? you've been in that room too where you surprised people. And that's kind of yeah. what you're saying too is like, man, there's some people that I get in the room like, oh, this going to go. And then they're like, no, nah, I didn't. Nah, and then real. there's somebody else that surprised you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, but you know how to tell someone no. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, or I just like, you know, curve them a little bit. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh -huh. like, did you, man, did my number change? <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, but yeah, but you gotta think, man, there is a there's gotta be a lot. And 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 I mean, you could change someone's life the same way someone changed your life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's got to be hard sometimes, like, ah, oh, damn. Well, I mean, I also just started a situation <clears throat> for my publishing venture. So, mm -hmm. like, I am giving more opportunities out to songwriters right. and producers and just trying to really open myself up to that world and just, like, build with the next generation. Hey, man, is there any song that you wish you would have done? Like, it's got to be a gang of producers that say, man, I time? wish I would have did In Words in Paris. You mean, like, now or just period? Period. Any? I mean, sh man, Thriller from Michael yeah. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What about modern day where you hear something like, ah, oh, man? Um, sh man, it's it's a lot, man. Um, modern day, like right now. In the last like five, ten, let's go five, ten years. Five, ten years. I like to sing about me by Kendrick. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I like real soulful, heartfelt right. joints. So, like, the joint off Good Kid, I, even though I did a joint on there, backseat right. freestyle, but you know what I mean? Just you like. You do be like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, something like that. Um, I can't call it. Really, though. Uh, do you do you listen to music or when you lock in, do you not listen to anything? No, nah, yeah. I listen to everything. I listen to all type of genres, all eras. Yeah. Like, I just, like, and I also make so much music that I'm taking time to study what I'm doing. I leave the studio. I might have a few new songs. I'm playing them joints back to back to back, just like studying them, seeing how I can make them better. So I'll go between playing my own stuff and just whatever. When we hear so many of the hits, right, and we know Hit Boy and we know, you know, the catalog of music, yeah. how many songs 
if, if we could sit here and say, oh, man, we'd start naming off songs. How many songs do you think you have in the vault? Not recorded right now. In the vault? It's hundreds, bro. Hundreds, if not thousands. You know what I mean? Just like endless. I got I got four albums with people. Like I um I got damn near a full album full of music with Roddy Rich, wow. with Don Tolliver. Like obviously I got a plethora of music with Nas, you mm. know what I mean? Like I just I'm doing this all day, bro. I'm doing this all day. What do you do when you're away from the studio? Besides being dead, oh, okay. this guy, man, hey man, like, you know what I mean. <laughs> Raising your little one, and he'll be three. He's gonna be three, yeah, next month. Hey man, birthday, dude. <laughs> it, it's crazy how we thought we were living, yeah, until yeah, nah, for sure. we have something to live for, and that's your little percent. one right there, bro. Yeah. Nah, it yeah. changed my whole route up. I'm up, I'm up earlier. I'm just doing just like real dad stuff, man, yeah. at all times. You know, on top of making him a part of what I'm doing. Like he's in a big, it's my first big boy interview. His too, and, huh? you know, <laughs> his too. So yeah. it's like we did a lot of our first together, and that's that's just a beautiful thing, man. Hey, that's man. Awesome. Well, I really thank you for your time, mm -hmm. bro. Mm -hmm. no, I appreciate and and all I'm telling you, man, real. I've been admiring you from a close as as close as I can get, mm -hmm. and from a distance. And I really thank you for coming in here, bro. Oh, and I wish you nothing but the best, bro. Yeah. And we're going to do it again. Respect, for sure. All the yeah. time back at you as well, man. Yeah. Hit boy in the neighborhood, big boy's yeah. neighborhood. Yeah.